This is the new Caprice skirt pattern. And I have a little pattern hack for you of how to get these like exposed seams um, ruffled. So in the pattern, we don't have the exposed seams. We have it just normally sewn, but I'm gonna show you how we do the gathered exposed seams with a rolled hem. First, you want to um, do finish your seams on your tier pieces. I'm showing you all three tiers here, but something to note, if you're working with a solid fabric or um, a fabric where seams are gonna be real noticeable, you're gonna want to hold off on sewing your third tier until the pockets are installed. So then you can put, you can sew the side seams of the first and second tiers that will include the pocket and then um, add in your bottom tier in the round. So in one go, instead of just working on the front and the back, like I'm showing you here. So what you wanna do is finish your seams and how we're going to do this, and you can do this a different way if you prefer. There's many ways you can do it. I've got the exposed seam on the top part of each tier. And on the bottom of each tier, I have finished the seams with a serger, like how you see up here on the top, because this is where the waistband's gonna go. Um, so I've got, the top is just serge top and bottom, because there's no exposed seams on the top. The middle tier has the rolled hem on the top, and the bottom has a serged edge, because that's covered up by the bottom tier that also has um, a rolled hem and um, a bottom serged hem which will fold up and you won't see that. Or else I guess you could do a rolled hem on the bottom too. So that's my alignment here. So once you have those seams finished, how you want them, um, and I'll include a quick video on my settings that I use to get a rolled hem. Now, if you're wondering how to get this nice rolled edge stitch on your serger, like what settings, I'll show you what I do for my Baby Lock Triumph. I think all Baby Locks are probably about the same. And all machines, like the most basic thing you need to do is remove your left hand needle. You just want one needle in here and it should be on the right hand side. Then I have my stitch length selector at four. I've also heard, I mean, you can play with it. That is the, the name of the game with this. You just need to get some scrap of your fabric you're using and test out the stitches because different fabrics will need different requirements. But for this fabric, I'm going to do a four. And I just learned this, that do you see how there's big numbers and then there's smaller numbers? The smaller number is for the right-hand needle and the larger number is for the left-hand needle. So you know if you're just working with the right-hand needle and you want four, that's where the it should be marked at. I thought that was interesting. And then over here, this is um, just setting it up for a rolled hem. I have it at one and I have my differential set at either in. And then sometimes if you see some skipping stitches, you can put it a little below in and that should help. And then for this triumph, um, I'm putting it on the C stitch selector and I'll show you what we get. So you do wanna make sure that you're cutting off some of the raw edge. It just gives you a nicer finish. So I'm just going to um, cut off about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, more like an eighth of an inch. pulling it through, but you do want to keep your hands on it, make sure it's going straight. Um, the other fun thing you can do with a rolled hem is you can turn it into a lettuce hem, which is when you have that wavy um, hem finish, but that only works on a knit fabric. And what you do when you're doing that is when you're um, sewing, you want to stretch your fabric behind the needle. So it stretches out the ribs and then the stitches just are fill it in more and that gives it that wavy look. So there's our rolled hem. The 
hardest part of this whole process is getting the gathers even. So I'm gonna show you just a little quick little trick you can do. Um, it's super simple. Um, divide your lengths in quarters. So I have marked the quarters here on this top middle piece. So I just fold it, I just folded it in half and marked that and then I folded it again and marked that. So you may not be able to see it in this video, but there are quarter points marked here, here, and here. And I'm doing the same thing with the middle tier. I've got quarter points marked here, here, and here. You can see that. So now I'm going to, and I've got my basing threads already stitched on. And now I know that this is gonna line up here. And actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it see how this works. I actually haven't tried pinning it before gathering. So we'll see. We'll see what if that works or not. So now I'm marking up my second quarter mark to the second one on the top. Like so. And then the outer edge, side seam area. I'm lining up. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So now I know how much each section needs to gather to. So I'm just gonna take my tails and I'm gonna start pulling and just dis distributing the width. It may not work to pin it first because you do have to work from one side out. So actually that doesn't work to pin. So trial and error. I guess it would work on the outer edges, um, but it, we need to be able to move freely through the length. Okay, so now I'm just gonna gather it. And then once I've got those gathers, I'll be able to line it up and distribute a little bit better. I've got the whole piece gathered generally, and now I'm going to align up my markings. So, and I'm going to be able to more accurately um, disperse these gathers. There we go. That is just a little bit easier. I think especially this will help when you're doing that bottom tier because there's just a lot more fabric you're dealing with. So once I have the gathering how I like it, I overlap that gathering mount on top of the bottom and I just use, I eyeball it and I use like the bottom of that bottom basting stitch. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. So I just align the bottom of my basting stitch to the bottom of the top, hem, like the raw edge. It's not raw, it's surged. But you have to serge those edges because they will be exposed and wovens ravel, so you don't want that. So I just line that up and then I use a ton of pins. I'm not a big pinner, but I definitely use a lot of pins with this to make sure all my gathers were dispersed evenly and that they were lined up correctly because you don't want to you know, pin this piece up here and this piece down there because you're not paying attention because then it'll be all wonky. So you wanna make sure it's a nice straight line. 
So I did that on the middle and I did that on the bottom. And now I'm just gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch, use a straight stitch with probably a three length, that's probably what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna stitch through all layers. So this middle piece and the top piece. And I think I'm gonna go right through the middle of my two lines of basting because they're far apart enough that I can do that. And that will secure the middle piece to the top and then I'll be able to remove those basting stitches. And maybe it's helpful to you to see what the back, the wrong side looks like. You can see how I've got the top, middle, bottom, and you can see how this top piece is overlapped on top of the middle piece and the middle is overlapped on top of the bottom. So you can kind of see how that's oriented if that's helpful. So I've attached the bottom and middle tiers all together and you can kind of see the end result, that fun seam detail all joined together. This kind of reminds me of like country, like line dancing. I kind of want to take it to, we're going on vacation to Colorado to a dude ranch. I might have to bring this with me and some boots because I think that would be so fun. Um, so now I'm going to do the same thing I did here to the back pieces and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we attach the pockets. These are really cool pockets that they're not going to, like sometimes when you're wearing a dress or a skirt, your pockets kind of like slouch down to get kind of annoying. These are anchored at the waistline, which makes it such a more sturdy, stable pocket, especially when you're working with like a lightweight fa fabric like I am here. So super simple, make sure you have transferred your markings on your top tier piece or top tier whatever, whatever you're working with. It's that triangle marking there. Um, and that's where you're going to attach your pockets and sew them straight down. So I've already done that here. Right sides together, do this front and back. And then you're also going to understitch that seam and understitching is just stitching through the pocket piece and the seam allowance. So you're not stitching, uh, it's just on the seam allowance. And that will help roll everything to the inside and your pockets won't peek out. So now that we've done that to the front and back, we're going to align the front and back skirt pieces, right sides together, and then we just stitch, or serge, I'm gonna serge, um, all around the pockets and then down the side seams. So I've got this side seam and pocket pinned. I just wanted to go over how I'm pinning this. So you're starting at the top right here. So you're gonna, you're gonna stitch just this little bit here at the, around the waist, and then you're gonna come to the pocket and go all the way around the pocket. And when you get to this juncture, you're gonna go straight across and then down. So you'll be corners up here and then we'll snip into to make sure that they lie flat. Now when you come to your side seams, make sure your tiers are lined up. You want them to look like it's all one piece. Um, so make sure you get that area lined up correctly. All right, everything is stitched on and attached. Um, I did want to note, um, I don't serge first when I'm doing the side seams, especially when I have pockets like this. Uh, and a woven. I like to straight stitch first going all the way around and then I clip through this intersection where it's kind of like a tight curve or a corner and uh, when I come back in and finish the seams I'll use my serger and do this in one pass and then I'll move this out of the way and I'll be able to do the side seam straight. So that's how to do that. Now to finish up our pockets you're going to fold your pocket over and just stitch it, in, not stitch it, pin the top of it. You just wanna keep it there like so. It's just gonna come straight across. And now you can fold over your waistband channel that we're gonna use to thread our elastic through and it will just catch the top of our, or it will cover the top of our pocket. So that's just gonna come over that one inch all the way around and it will secure the tops of the pocket. 
And that's how you get the exposed gathered seams with rolled hem on the Caprice skirt pattern. Make sure you pick up your pattern today before the sale ends.